Hey, this is Mike from Presto Mike, and in this video, we're gonna see how we can transform this raw photo into this using Photoshop and Affinity. Let's get started. We're gonna start with Photoshop, and this is the image that I exported into Camera Raw Photoshop. So, as you can see, all the settings are at the default, all in the center no changes have been made you can do two things here you could manually change your exposure and all of the other settings or you can do it a different way which I'll show you a little later on so let's start by adjusting the sliders exposure up a little bit contrast a bit highlights have been brought down shadows up white and black points these are some things that you will need to set manually so just hold on alt key while you drag the slider to the right just wait until you see the white or the black dots appear stop there that's where that's your point the white or black next we would like to do uh, is increase some clarity we're good to increase clarity I like to do that uh, if you don't like to do that that's not a problem vibrance and saturation your choice I'd like to increase a little bit of vibrance and saturation and that's gonna be good. The other thing I'd like to do is set my composition. If you notice the subject is right in the center but now let's put it to one of the sides. Since the butterfly is facing down let's put the butterfly up there in the top right corner and you can see that the composition just looks a lot better now. So this is the first method of doing it uh, and let's look at the second one which is a simpler method. If you don't want to spend all this time uh, sliding all the sliders uh, separately, you could try this method. I just brought everything back to zero. Let's start. Look at the auto key there, the auto button, click on it. Whoa, you see that there's a lot of difference already and your photo starts looking better already. Well. Now you can adjust your sliders. We use auto mainly for the exposure compensation, for contrast settings, and sometimes for white and black point. I think not sometimes, most of the times. Then go on and adjust your other sliders as usual, your clarity, vibrance, saturation, your highlights and shadows, and your photo is back to looking good as it did when you do it manually. You can also set uh, some other settings, go into uh, the optional settings where you can find a lot more options for you to set up. Uh, I know I'm repeating myself, but yes, you could work on luminance. Uh, just take a look at the ISO, it's very low, so there's no problem to adjust the luminance. But if your ISO was very high, then you would uh, want to increase the luminance a little bit to remove all the noise. Or you could go into the HSL and make sure that your colors are looking the way they want, you want them too. You could also do some uh, vignetting. Yeah, if you go to the FX uh, tab there, you could use some vignetting. Just to make sure your photo looks a little better. It's always good for you. All that remains now is for you to save your work and close out of camera roll. So down here on the left and bottom you see the save option. Once you click on that you can select your options. You could choose to save your file in the same location or there's so many settings here. We're not going to go through all of them. You, you could take a look at all of them and save your photo the way you want it to be saved. You choose a file size. Uh, yeah, go crazy. Well, that's it about Photoshop. Let's quickly jump into Affinity and see if we can make a difference there. So, when you open the file in Affinity, it's a little different. You don't get a camera raw window as such. You are directly in the develop mode. So here on the right hand side you will see all the options that seem very, very familiar to Photoshop 
uh, they're not exactly the same but they work for you uh, but you will also notice that we have fewer options or the options which are available are categorized into different sections so you need to get a little getting used to before you start using affinity photo but then it's the same you've got the white balance there you've got exposure and then you can work on your contrast your brightness let's adjust the sliders to make it look good One thing you may notice is that Affinity Photo responds a little slower than Photoshop and that you might take a look at the changes, the preview, preview changes appearing slightly slower than normal but that's okay, you can still get the job done. Adjusting the temperature to whatever color you want it is a very good method actually you could do this in photoshop also but i know i didn't show it to you but there's a slider just up there in photoshop camera raw which will help you adjust the temperature using temperature to your liking is a good way to add your unique touch to your photos once you're happy with the settings i think all you have to do is okay let's do it uh, we gotta crop it just the way we did it in photoshop so uh, let's go ahead and crop this photo um, just to make our composition look better You'll notice that when we use the crop button here you can see the grid which is an excellent way for us to see where we actually want to place our subject. It's nice uh, in Photoshop Camera Raw we don't see it but of course in Photoshop main window you would see this. Uh, Affinity has this right here built into the develop mode. So it's easy to crop and make sure your photo looks just the way you want it. Save your photo and to save the photo there is one additional step you need to uh, perform in Affinity. Click on the develop. Your photo is developed and then you move into the main window of Affinity and then from there you can use Ctrl Shift Alt S all four buttons together save your photo into the location you want it. Well that's it folks I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, keep watching for more videos. Thank you for watching this video. This was Mike from Presto Mike. Subscribe to my channel to be updated of new videos that I'll be posting soon. Enjoy your day. Bye.